I think we were doing a series, Calvin, called Jesus Said. Jesus Said. And uh, one of the things that Jesus says within the word, he says, go, which is an interesting thing. Um, it, it gives me the impression that it's not a suggestion. <laughs> uh, one of the, and I, what I want to share with you tonight is one of the purposes as a believer left on this earth is to be an effectual, an effectual witness. Uh, Luke 10, 2, coming up, just says, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So what I want to see about the scripture here, he said to them, The harvest truly is great, it's plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. So here we see a situation where there's nothing wrong with the harvest. We have a generation of unsaved people out there that are dying, that are lost, that are lonely, that are struggling, that are looking for answers. So there's nothing wrong with the harvest. It's the laborers that are the problem. So here we go. Get ready for it. So, um, yeah, so, you know, that's what we need to do. And I, I was quite encouraged this morning, very encouraged, in fact, by the whole aspect of uh, Calvin's message about prayer and fasting. Yeah. One of the things about a move of God, and I believe in my heart that God really wants to bring an awakening within this land, within the church of God again, to actually reach the lost, to preach the gospel, and to effectually bring a harvest into the church of God. And um, I believe that, uh, you know, through prayer and fasting and every move of God in church history, there's always been a people that have, 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 have got on their knees and prayed and, and fasted uh, for something better, some, something greater, something more miraculous to happen um, in our midst, in our communities. The harvest is, is truly plentiful. And I believe that God wants us to rediscover and, and ignite the passion and fire of God and His Holy Spirit within our lives. You know, we, without passion, we're nothing. God wants to read it, wants to, I believe He wants to ignite within us a passion and a desire for, uh, to reach out to people. That, uh, you know, that instead of looking inward, and there's a time and a place for that to reflect, but I believe sometimes that we have done that at the expense of reaching out and looking out to the harvest and then saying, God, do you want to send me? What do you, who do you want me to reach? So I believe that God wants to do that and, and I, I truly believe that God will bring, you know, we've had many prophecies in this land about a move of God is coming, a move of the Holy Spirit and, uh, you know, and we need that in our lives. We need that in this nation. We need that in our church. Uh, we need that fire of God to burn again uh, brightly within our lives. You know, the, the Bible says that out of your belly, out of your heart, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. This is the, the, the rivers of the Holy Spirit flowing through you. God's desire is for His life, His Spirit to, throw, to flow through, through you. You know, to receive like, not, not like the Dead Sea that just has one kind of entrance, but it doesn't have an outlet. God blesses us to bless. God anoints us to anoint. God fills us to give out to others as well. So out of your belly. And I would just encourage you to let the river of God flow from your life. You know, the Great Commission is fast. Someone has said the Great Commission is, has fast become the Great Omission with the church. But we can change that. We can change that with our desire, with our praying, pr with our praying, with our fasting, with uh, just the desire that we have in our, in our lives to see something different happen. You know, in Mark 16, 15, it says there, again, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Not a suggestion. You know, the word go means that we need to go into our world. We have a world. We have a world of family. We have a world of relatives. 
We have a world of associates that we work with, people we work with, and that just that we know friends and that we know in the community. So we need to go into that world. We need to look at that world, I believe, and, and really know that those people that are non-saved, your family as well, my family, um, that are, are not saved, I, you know, I'm, I'm concerned for them. Because I know, you know, if they die without Jesus, you know, the, the implications of that are quite frightening. We need to understand that they'll be lost for eternity. And although it's not a favourite subject to preach on or anything, hell is a rea reality as much as heaven. And, you know, this is an eternal separation and, and lostness. And we need to, I believe, need to get that passion and that desire, that hunger again for us to be able to be effectual in our influence uh, towards our loved ones. Go into all the world, your world, what is your world, and preach the gospel, the, the good news. You know, the, the Bible tells us that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel, your testimony, the good news of what Christ has done in your life has a power unto salvation. And as you begin to share that, um, God can actually really start using the words that you speak um, to actually begin to convict and draw uh, people to himself. In Luke 14, 23, I know they're coming up a bit, haven't they? Yep. Then the master said to the servant, this, this is um, just a scripture in the parable of, um, of the great banquet or the great supper. You know, the ones that were actually invited to the supper made excuses they didn't want to come. They didn't want to, one was getting married, the other had a land, a plot of land he needed to go and see. But they were all excuses. Um, and then so, you know, the, the master said to the servant, go out and, and, and uh, draw more people in. And in verse 15, uh, 23 I should say, then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. God's desire is for his house to be filled. You know, he wants people to be reached. And we are the instrument of that. That the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, the word of God, which is Jesus. We need to know it. We need to be able to share that. That, that uh, people can come to the knowledge. Compel is an interesting word. It means, it, 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 it indicates um, a, a sense of urgency, of persuasion, to compel someone, to compel someone of the truth, to compel someone of what is happening, to convince. One, one English translation says that it's the flavour of urgency. And I believe that we need... With everything in my heart, and, and certainly that's going to be that's my direction, is is to get an urgency, to get the fire burning. You know, the, the scripture says that we are to fan the flame of God within our lives, to fan it up. If it's just a little bit of a flame, God wants us to fan it so that it becomes a, a huge raging fire. You know, fan the flame. The uh, Paul said to Timothy, who was feeling a bit waned and a bit kind of drained, he said. You know, don't despise, stir up the gift of God that is within you. Stir up the gift of God, the Spirit of God that is within you. Um, and that will motivate you towards purpose. Purpose is to reflect Jesus' image. Our purpose is to reflect Jesus' image. The Bible says that we are created in the image of God. And so we're to reflect uh, that image, the image of God through us. By the Holy Spirit to a lost humanity. In, and they are lost. In attitude, in morality, in love. That's the sacrificial love of God. The fruits of the Spirit and the word of your testimony. You know, we underestimate the word of our testimony. And I would suggest tonight, if you haven't got one, then you need one. You need to get saved. You need to get saved to have one. And if you're here tonight and you don't know Christ... Then he's waiting, he's knocking on the heart of you, the, the door of your heart, and he wants you to let him in. Okay? So he so Jesus wants us to be able to reflect his image uh, to a dying humanity.
to people that we rub shoulders with, people that we know, people that we work with, and our families as well. You know, you know, all of us, all of us have seen a full moon, right? And what is that? The, the, the full moon, the moon, is it's, it's a reflection of the sun. And that's exactly what God wants us to be. He wants us to be a full moon, right? He wants you to be a full moon, reflecting the sun um, to humanity and to those that are dying in their sin in separation from God. God's intention for us is to be effectual in reaching the lost with the gospel, with his gospel. His purpose for us is to preach. It's to witness, it's to preach. Preach means, preach is just not for preacher, preachers. Preach means to deliver a message or to declare or explain a truth or the gospel. The Bible tells us that we are all, not only saints, <laughs> Saint Calvin, Saint Sue, Saint David, um, we're all saints. That's what the Bible tells us. That's what we are royal priesthood. So I, I, you know, I tend to believe what the Bible says about me rather than what, you know, what other people might say or myself. Let's, let's agree to what the Bible says you are and get that into our lives. You know, the Bible says we're living epistles. So we need to, I believe that we need to take off the muzzle. You know, one of the things that God said to me just recently because I was thinking, oh, I've passed it, it's, you know, I've, I've missed the boat. You know, I miss the boat, I'm getting on a bit in age, you know, got getting some old teeth going on here. And so, you know, I was thinking, you know, maybe I have passed, maybe it's, but no. And some, God, laid in my heart, he said, I saved the best wine for last. And that's, you know, and God has saved the best la wine for last to his church as well. I believe that we desperately need an awakening of the Holy Spirit to inspire us, to fire us up to understand what's really happening in this world and in our community and in society. Um, living epistles, we need to take the muzzle off and not be afraid. You know, what, what stops us? The fear of man, the fear of failure, um, the fear of rejection. Let's get rid of that. We're fearless. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. You're a lion, you're as bold as a lion in your spirit. You've just got to get in touch with that. Get, in, get, get really down there and get, get really in tune with that. And I tell you what, that'll be a great motivation in your life. You know, uh, Jake shared something about the Good Samaritan. Mar 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 what's the word? Good Samaritan. Samaritan. <laughs> twisted there. I just want to bring out some points there about... Um, just briefly about the Good Samaritan. Great story. And, you know, we're, we're called to go into all the world and preach the gospel, the, the, the word says. We're going to, into all the world and make disciples. You know, we're, we, you know, we're all disciples, but we're being made disciples as well. And God requires us to make disciples. But there is a cost. There is a sacrifice to that, that I believe that God wants us all to be involved in. I'm pretty sure that most of you hopefully are uh, in tune, uh, understand the, the story, the parable of the Good Samaritan. What did he do? He went out of his way. There is a cost. You know, God will require you at times to go out of your way to help people, to reach people. He dealt with the inconvenience. This is an interesting one. God wants us to deal with the inconvenience of helping people. You know, if it's not in, you know, I'll help you if it's in a convenient for me, but, uh, you know, if it's not convenient for me, then uh, see you later, you know. But we're not our own. We've been bought with a price. God has a plan and purpose for us. He went out of his way. He got his hands dirty. He got down to it to help this, this, uh, this guy that had been, uh, been beaten up and left for dead. He was willing to use his resources, his money, Wow, his money, he paid the cost. You know, everything we own and our resources, our finances, they're not ours. They're God's. You know, he, he's the owner of that. He gives it to us. He wants to bless us. He wants to prosper us. But he wants, he, he prospers, he prospers us not just for our own selfish need. He prospers, pro, prospers us 
so that we can be a blessing to others, so that we have a resource to really see the kingdom of God advanced. Amen. So he didn't hesitate or make excuses. And I want to take us to a, uh, 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 three or four verses in the scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 20. And there's just so much in this. It's just so, so good. Um, it just says there, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to, uh, back to himself through Christ. And God has given us, that's you, me, God has given us this task of reconciling people to himself. Reconciling people to himself. He's given us this task. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. Thank God for that. And he gave us, you and me, this wonderful message of reconciliation. Another translation says that he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So in each of you, you have a gift, a ministry of reconciliation. And I just want to inspire you, if I can, and encourage you tonight to get in touch with that. To become as bold as a lion. To get in touch with what the Holy Spirit and God wants to do through your life. You have it in you. you you're fearless if you get in touch with that, that new man, that new life, the new creation that God has created within your spirit. For God was in Christ. He gave us the wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ, and then it goes on to say... So we are Christ ambassadors. Incredible word that you're an ambassador. An ambassador represents a uh, represents. He's a representative of. He's in another country, but he re he's representing a country to a country. If you understand what I mean. And we we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We represent another kingdom. We represent another government. It's called the kingdom of God. <laughs> We're, we're his ambassadors to actually be a witness to him, for him. So we are ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Interesting scripture. He is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. So don't be afraid to speak. We must speak. We must learn to become vocal. We must learn to share our testimony, to share the gospel, the good news of what Jesus has done in your life. You know, I'm so thankful that somebody shared Christ with me. You know, someone took the time, the courage, the patience, the boldness to tell me about Jesus. And it changed my life. It changed my life. I, I hate to think where I would be now. And it's probably true for you. You know, we forget. You know, we forget that first love, that time, when we invited Christ into our lives. How new, how refreshing, how, how, how life-giving that was. It changed everything. The love of God, the power of Jesus coming into your life. So I would encourage you as ambassadors, as saints, as royal priests, um, help people become reconciled to God. Get in touch with that ministry of reconciliation within you. And the last scripture I want to share is in 1 Peter 3.15. It just says there, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks. You to give a reason for the hope that is that you have. Have you got that ready? Have you do you know what to say? Even if you don't, be be willing to do it in the Holy Spirit. Begin to learn to respond and allow the Holy Spirit to give you the words to say.
to bring his word back to your remembrance, to, to allow the love of and compassion of the Holy Spirit in Christ through you, identify and touch someone's life where they are in their need. We need to do this. We need to be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks the reason for the hope. So what, what I want to ask you tonight, are you all in? Yes. Yes. Are you all in? Yes. Have you burnt your bridges? Yes. Have you stopped looking back into Egypt? Yes. Have you stopped looking back into Egypt? Yes. 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 Amen. There's no hope there. There's no answer there. We know that. So there's no, no sense in flirting with danger anymore. Let God, let God inspire us to take us on. To take us on. We're bought with a price. We are not our own. So I'm going to encourage you tonight and ask you, will you fan the flame? Will you fan the flame of God in your life? Will you stir your heart? Will you pray for your loved ones, your lost ones, the people you know? Maybe the band can come up now. That would be great. Thank you. Will you stir up the gift of God within your life? Will you get to know your neighbour? Yes. There's a lot of yeses coming to them soon down here. Yes. You get to reach. <laughs> it's great. Will you burn for Jesus? Will you set the flame alight even more? Will you fan it and burn for Christ? And start looking outward. Start looking upon the harvest. Start looking upon the harvest fields. See that they are ripe. See that they are ripe, ready for harvest. Even if you get rejected, you'll find ones that you can minister to. Um, you know, look for every opportunity that you can, you know, to share Christ with someone. And you'll get better at it the more practice you get at it. Practice makes perfect. The more you do it, the more easy it will become. Start somewhere. Start somewhere with it.